So I was thinking this morning, I got up at around 5.30-ish, and um, I was making my smoothie, getting ready, drinking some water, thinking about the conversation that I had with Grandpa Ken and Grandma Kathy yesterday at the restaurant, talking about how people act, and kind of like it just when you're a kid, you're moldable and things like that, you, you listen and you learn your lessons, and you don't have as many options. You're forced to do that when you're an adult. You have all these options because you're an adult. You can make your own decisions, and you run away. And you can run away from the truth. A kid can't run away from the truth. He has to listen and obey and do the things that he's told because that's his life and that's his world. And I kind of just, it's been going over in my head <clears throat> over and over that, you know, you can love your someone a lot, always save them, and they can just continue to rely on that, that someone to save them over and over again to cover their mistakes because they really haven't felt the pain or the scare of something dangerous. Like... The analogy that's going through my head is the kid just jumping in the pool and then you diving in and saving him, saying, yeah, please don't do that, don't do it again, and he just keeps doing it because he likes to be saved. Like Some people get in the habit of liking to be saved, and that was kind of my marriage where um, someone doesn't realize how harmful their choices are and that you may love them, but you them jumping into the pool over and over again or you bailing them out of something or covering for them is actually hurting them because they're used to someone coming in and saving them. Like people don't actually change unless it's through the pain of life. You have to experience enough pain sometimes to actually change. I know for me, it's like, yeah, that's absolutely the case. And once I experience enough pain, I'm like, I'm sick of this. Change really happens. And that's probably my biggest motivator is pain. And yeah, knowing what I want after that, like, hey, I don't like this, or I'm failing at this too much, or this really sucks, and I want to get this over as quick as possible. So the pain that we experience in life is good, but some people are sheltered from it and push that onto other people and make other shame and guilt them into taking responsibility because that's how they get through life. They've always been saved by someone or something, and they play the victim like they can't do anything about it, and they keep jumping in the traffic. They keep jumping into the pool. And even though you love them, but you, you, and you told them a million times, you're gonna get tired of that. You're gonna be maybe it's a good some. I'm gonna see how they play this out. You know, maybe I'll let, let them struggle struggle in the pool, and then it might get close to death or like. But or they might happen. You know, if you tell your kid to stay away from cliffs, and he walks on the edge of the cliff, you can't protect your kid from everything. Your kid has to have some common sense. Some people. You have to have your own responsibility for your own life, and you can't expect other people to do it. You can't even expect your kids to do it. You may love your kids, but they might get in trouble. They might get caught up in a fight. They might get caught up in uh, have a kid too too early. They might get caught up in uh, all kinds of stuff where they skip out on the important things in life. You may love them, but that's their decision. People are going to make their own decisions at the end of the day, and you can't make all your decisions for your own kids. You or for anyone, or even in a marriage or someone else, someone doesn't want to change, you can't make every decision for them. It has to come down to them actually wanting to change. So that was like kind of the big thing that was going through my head this morning. Um, just making, taking responsibility, making the change, and trying to think of other analogy. I'm sure there's just, you know, we can just sum it up as far as, you know, a teenager that wrecks a car and dies, you know, going too fast. He knew that what he was doing was stupid or playing the music wasn't paying attention but that happened because of some of the choices that he made obviously he was driving that car at a certain speed and there was a corner where he veered off into the other lane and or into the ditch and things happen and those are consequences the law of physics and, and gravity and all that come into play same thing in relationships you know you can't push someone so far and always expect them to save you and then one day they're just not going to save you they're going to be like this is, you're doing this intentionally. You're putting me at risk intentionally every single day. I'm putting all this effort in. I'm putting my life at risk by saving you over and over. I'm putting my time on hold. I'm doing all this. And you continue to just abuse it and do it over and over again. And people uh, need to just grow up. Grow up and take responsibility for the things that they're doing to other people. They don't realize it, but people are paying the price for you. Your parents are paying the price for you when you're young. Someone's paying the price for you in a relationship. Someone might be paying for your bills, paying for this, covering for you so you don't have to work and you never stop to think, oh, I'm really lucky that someone does this for me or I'm going to push them even harder and because they don't do enough. Even though they're trying to love me the best they can, I'm still going to push harder and harder for 
them to please me so I can be saved, so I can be taken care of, so I can get more, like, and that's putting a lot of responsibility and pressure on someone that is trying to take care of themselves at the same time. They might be a generous person, but someone's generosity and love can only go so far. And some people have the ability to, or the conviction, they might be under some kind of belief system. My grandpa was under the Dutch strict rule of a, in in the 19... 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s of just he was in a marriage for 38 years and he was miserable and, and she would intentionally make decisions to hurt him all the time and wouldn't let him have friends that she, they would be getting ready to he'd be getting ready to uh, go to the friend's house she'd get dressed and then as soon as like she got dressed she would just say I'm not going so like within you know 30 minutes to an hour she, he would have to call them and say we're not coming so and there was all kinds of things where he Whatever she could, he said she could do to make me miserable, she did it. And there's just people out there that do that. They live to inflict pain on other people, and I don't get it. And it doesn't make sense for a healthy person how you could live like that. But it happens. And like my, my grandpa, I mean, like he was under the belief system, and that's that's what a Christian man does is that he just stuffs it, and then he really only had his kids to be friends with. Everyone else, like he. He was kind of saw it as, you know, weird because he could never socialize. He could never act the way he knew or he could say the things he wanted to say. He could never express himself. But he wanted the way he wanted to express himself. So he was stuck in that vicious and abusive relationship for 38 years. And he did it. Be, he did. He was faithful until she died and he was miserable and he, he hated the whole entire thing. And, um, the only reason he did it because the belief system around him and his parents were treating him like garbage if he tried to express or showed any weakness and that's what he had to do or that's what he thought do, he had to do and really if he just changed his mindset his life would have been completely different he would have been a better person he's a very quiet timid person today I mean he's a strong person quietly secretly I mean he obviously can keep it together for 38 years in a mis miserable marriage where she tort like abused him he can keep it together, but you know he shies away from making decisions or stealing the, the spotlight that he deserves. He's a good person. He has a lot of wisdom. He has a lot of things to share, but he always passes the spotlight to someone else, or he doesn't speak speak away when he just speaks when he's called on or someone talks to him. And that's because that's what he way he was treated uh, when he was growing up and when in his marriage and everything that he did, he had to wait because someone else was in front of him pushing him down and it wasn't about him so it's really sad he's a really good really good person and I feel really bad that he had to go through that same thing too is when you're in you know something that's hard or difficult a lot of times you keep doing the stuff that hurts you over and over again because you don't know any better you just grew up with that and you have this belief system maybe it's religion maybe it's you know maybe it's your family maybe it's friend group and you're Allowing like five to twenty people, maybe you'll get you'll get a couple weeks of like people looking at you funny, but people forget like you know uh, wounds heal, things heal up. People don't remember those mistakes; they only remember them if you keep bringing them up. So if you can't continue to shy away or not show up, and you hide it, hide because you know you made a mistake, people are gonna feed off that. You have to lean into your life even more when you're going through these difficult times and saying this is who I am and that's what I'm going through and this is what I believe and I'm actually better I'm actually really good after this decision and people are going to accept that and respect that and you're going to be better off because you you chose to love yourself during that during that situation you're proud of who you are because you chose to do the right thing and show off who you are in the midst of a difficult decision you can still be strong. You only grieve because you choose to grieve. You only feel sad if you choose to be sad. You only are depressed as if you view your life as depressing. You only have a bad in intimacy in a relationship if you view your intimacy as bad. Like everything is perception. Like, and you can, even the, the painful things or the, the stuff like that, you can view it, view it bad or good. Like you say, oh, I learned something from my losses. You learn from your losses. Like that's, you lost and you could say oh, I lost and then go in a pity party you feel sorry for yourself or you could be the person that could always think positive and you never lose you always are learning something you're always in action there's the the cone of learning that I learned about the other day that 90% uh, of our learning occurs through action taking action the other is like writing is 70% writing and doing some kind of some kind of communication and then the other one is 50% of watching 
and listening to so something you get uh, is 50% you retain 50% of it and, and then there's like reading and reading and writing um, there's a couple other ones but like readings like the low you only retain like 10% so like all this stuff about oh I read a book and like people like so sum it up for me and like uh, uh, it was by like James King I think you know they barely can remember the author's name and then the main points are just like very bland whatever but the things that stand out to me is people's experiences um, seeing some of the things in history like that's why video is so powerful you retain 50% of it you retain 40% more which is massive and then if we actually take action and live in our lives and live in the present, live who we're supposed to be, we're going to learn so much more than thinking that, oh, I need to go through a book or an institution. Like, and that's like the slowest form of learning. That's the, if you want to accelerate your life, live in the present, live who you are right now, because the, <laughs> that's the biggest way you learn is just living your life. And people act like, I don't know, we are obsessed with like information or obsessed, obsessed with all the literature that we have. And really it's the slowest form of learning. And that's what I was writing this morning. I was writing in my book, and I couldn't have talked to nearly as, as a, the amount I'm talking to you right now. And going expanding on the topics, showing more detail, um, all the stuff that I, I would miss if I slowed down and wrote. And the communication through language is so important because you're moving at the speed of your thoughts. Like I'm moving at the speed of my thoughts right now. I may be thinking a few things ahead of this right now, but very few are writing. Not it gets backed up. It's like a logs being going downstream and then they hit a, a you know cliff or a, a dam and it just starts backpiling and backpiling so you never actually um, with writing get to complete that because you have to leave you get caught up like you don't you don't ever give yourself a chance to just get it all out or the gates to open and the logs go back downstream go downstream and um, that's important too is like if you have a thought to actually get the full thought out I think that's one thing too about therapy that I've been doing. Therapy has been huge because I, it's you know hour long, and it's you get to go expand on things quite a bit. And versus during the week, I don't talk. I don't tell other people this, or even if I have conversations, like it's so important for me to talk and get it all out and have a conversation with people because it's the the best way to communicate. You can express everything and show more detail at the speed of your thoughts versus writing or being quiet or meditating. You're kind of storing that stuff up and you really need to get the full de detox out. You really need to get a high intensity workout. And you, if you do something that's like stretching or something slow, you always feel like you have le something left in the tank. And that's for me, when I talk or communicate, I always feel like when I write, I always have a lot left in the tank. There's so much more I wanted to say, but I came up short. Or at the end of your day, you're always like, man, I came up short again. There's always the most disappointing thing in life is leaving something in the tank. Like if there's something you there's definitely days where you mess things up and you don't get to say everything I, all the time, every single day. And I want to start living where I get to express everything that I that I get that I feel. I want to share all the thoughts that I have, all the ideas and the visions and the encouragement that I want to give, the love that I want to express to people a lot of times it's just because we don't have enough time. We don't have enough time to do everything. And we're also, we want to be proper and write it and uh, fact check it and then do all this grammar, stuff like that. When you're never going to be, by the time you actually write that paper and send it to them, you know, maybe a month later, the moment's gone. Like the love that you want to show, they can't, you can't ever get that moment back. You have to be in the moment, be present and tell them that and be available. Like well, some people after churches bolt for the doors or after any event they bolt when that's the time you can actually express yourself hey how is that message how is this or this is why I like business and we cut ourselves short because we have the intention of going and doing something great with our day like getting all our stuff done everyone really uh, we could do all that if we just remain present with people and that's what we really want to do we want to impress people but we want to impress them with like stuff and material but if we actually remain present when people are around and when family around and instead of writing them that letter or giving them an expensive gift or a vacation we can actually do that in person we can do everything in person that we wanted to do a lot of things or if we wanted to build a team or find other business people that you could do business with or you want to find new clients it's like be in public all all day long i wrote about this the other day 
and marketing, like I need to get t-shirts and things like that. So I can be marketing all the time. I got, I mean, I wear my jacket everywhere and tell people what I do. Because the biggest thing when you go out in public is like, what people are like, what do you do? And I, I'm just going to make it easy for them. Like I wonder that all the time. What's well, the first question I'm going to ask them? Like, what do you do? Okay. This is where you to spend your time. This is how you spend your money. This is how you get your money. Uh, this is what you need. These are the resources you need to live your life. This, the circle of life of what we do is actually going to be the thing that we spend the most time on. So getting to the point real quick and then making yourself available, whether I get a, a Cubs hat and just order to, I, I need to be <laughs> wearing all the high school material like Central or something like that because I'm not from this area. I need to actually blend in as fast as possible. I need to build camaraderie as fast as possible. I need to like what they like. I need to have similar interests. If you don't have a similar interest, why would they talk to you? Well, if you don't, I'm not going to go up and talk to someone about uh, Utah, Georgetown, because I've never been there. I mean, I could because I've seen it on a map, but you get something just really random, like it doesn't matter, or this hoodie right here, it doesn't matter because it has no, nothing, you know, original about it. It has nothing special about it. It has no, represents nothing. It's just a gray t-shirt so what are they going to talk about oh, hey nice gray t-shirt i like gray too it's not having something important on your chest whether that's a cross or that's your, your faith uh sports team uh high school around here one of the big companies um that's important like for me i want to always be representing and building my brand and networking with people by wearing my t-shirts and being proud of who i am in the present who i am today is is perfectly fine if you're not happy with yourself today and you're never going to be successful or be the, the grand person. If you can't be happy with what you have right now, uh, Steve Cook <clears throat> said this, and he's uh, one of the fitness uh, gurus, and what he tells himself and how he's grown is that he's just really happy in the moment. He's really happy with who he has, and he started there. He started like with what you have. I have this camera right now. This is what I have, and this is how, how I can give it back, and it's not perfect right now, and I know it's not amazing for me either, and I wish there was more people around surrounding me, but he's like, if you can't be happy with your, what you have today or be happy in the present or be grateful, then the success and everything that you think is going to come into your life will ne never will come into your life. And that's true. I mean, that's so true. Why can't I just do like, and this is honestly really helpful for me. This is really feels good to actually turn on the camera, do this. Um, it feels really good to wear your t-shirt and have people recognize what you do. Uh, it's same thing with like the I was saying like military. We always wore our gear, and people knew who we were. So in the in the in combat or overseas, everyone knew who we were. We identified. We branded ourselves. Brand everything. Sticker everything about who you are. Really define who you are. So people know who you are. If you're in, you blend in, and you're never gonna, you're wearing camouflage gray and all that. You don't stand out. You're not wearing orange t-shirts or whatever. Why would anybody pay attention to you? Like, why you're just gonna blend? You're you're telling people don't talk to me. You're telling people um, I want to look like perfect. I want to look perfect, but um, I'm really concealed and uptight, and I look like I I'm just a, a, a statue of, of perfection. And like, people are t intimidated by that. Like, make it easy. Like, bunk, lower your like fancy shoe and jean thing, and just blend in. Don't always be so excessive with that kind of stuff like build camaraderie with their families build do something to re represent something a way where they can actually connect with you build, there needs to be ways that they can connect with you like right off the bat and it happens all the time i see it in social groups the guy that i always wearing the cubs hat and he's got a lot of friends at the bar he's got his gear like he <laughs> Is, is is a marketer like he's doing well and he's surrounding himself with his, his with his fans with his tribe the people that he cares about because he just labeled himself that from the get-go he didn't like make it hard for people to figure out he we know he's a cubs fan because he's wearing the gear same thing with any business is like i know my dad works for edward jones if he wears his edward jones thing like disguising yourself and people are like no one's going to be coming up to you like it's it's labeling who you are and being proud of it and being who you are in the moment and being proud of it, like using this equipment right here. Maybe I don't have a perfect mic and I maybe my hair's, I got bad head right now and that's why my hood's up because I look crazy. So, or it's just sharing when you have a thought, like turn on the camera, like that's important. Like don't think that you can't share that with anyone. Just do what you have to do to actually let the logs go downstream. Don't let them 
get jammed up in the dam and then you run away because you, you can't actually process all the information, let the gates open, let everything open, let everything flow, be in the moment. If you got something to say to someone, go say it to them. Honestly too, like family, friends, employers, um, if you want to take a trip, like just saying, I need to take a trip, like do what you have to do. Or with family, like it's so good to see some of the, the growth and development just because you had the courage to open up the topic and start to talk about it. I said this uh, in a couple of my Instagram videos, <clears throat> stories, that um, I'm starting to talk to people in their houses about their faith and tell just by saying, uh, I'm a Christian, I go to Bethel, Bethel Church over in Crown Point, I'm involved with helping out in the ministries, men's Bible study, I find it's my, one of my passion to connect with other men and just, it's been really helpful for me while I came down here, this is the one thing that's uh, made me really happy while I was here in Northwest Indiana, people are like, oh, that's amazing, yeah, I go to this church and we hit it off there and like I do a men's group here or I serve in this way or I do volunteer work here. And then we start to, to get to share our, our testimonies and our faith just because you had the courage to open up the topics and saying this is who I am and I'll give you a little bit more information, some of the vulnerable stuff like school or what you do with your spare time, your hobbies, the way, what sport teams you like. All these um, hobbies that we have are actually the things that we skip over. We're just like, hey, I'm Eric. And I'm here to sell you something. Uh, why? How would you ever expect anyone to connect with you? How would you, if that's the way you want to talk to people and you cut them short and say, oh, we're not doing business, I'm not going to talk. You just go back to your present, isolated self. Like, you have to enjoy people. You have to enjoy the conversation. You have to enjoy them. You have to enjoy their interests and hobbies. You have to enjoy your interests and hobbies. Allow yourself to breathe a little bit and be yourself and enjoy what you like and share what you like. It, this is all comes down in you and you're like, oh, I have to like go somewhere. And you're, where are you going to go? Back to your house and watch Netflix? I turn around my TV for for over a month and I just turned it around. It's not even plugged in right now because I don't need it. Like I get anxiety from watching TV because I know it's just wasting my time. It's just not going to benefit me at all. Like at the end of the day, like cut out what doesn't matter. Um, give time where it does. If you have an opportunity or you're enjoying yourself, indulgent on that if you're having fun with something like someone something stay stay longer if you're exercising and you're getting a lot of benefits out of it stay longer what is stopping you from actually doing nothing is stopping you you're just limiting yourself all you have to do is like do you care about it no then don't do it like it, if i like to have meet people and market and do all this stuff or do social media i should do more of that not saying oh well, i have to uh, do this with uh, my boss or my boss wants me to do this or my wife wants me to do this or I need to do 15 million classes online so I can get my PhD so I can feel good about myself you're actually denying yourself you're not actually being who you are you're putting you're putting other things before what you would rather be doing you're putting things that would you <laughs> things that you enjoy are gonna make you happy like the way you present yourself the energy and your personal health matters. The things that you care about matters. And you, you need to make those a priority. And like those are the things that are really going to change your life is that you give yourself enough, enough respect that you're going to do the things you actually like. And like the heck with everyone else. The heck with, the, with all this thing about making money. And so you can have massive amount of debt. So you have to pay it off and you have to work a job from 9 to 5. You're going to put yourself in that situation. You're going to put yourself in like something that stresses you out and like you feel depressed, you know you don't laugh enough, you know you're overweight, you know you're going into a rat race, you know you're gonna be paying bills for the rest of the next 30 years to pay off this student loan or this house, you know willingly that you're gonna be doing this, like you're trapping yourself, put, putting, putting handcuffs on yourself for the next 30 years or whatever it is, like is it worth it? Is it worth it to do? And there's so many variables Like you could lose your job, the economy sucks, or you could not get in an office, you could get fired, uh, you could lose in a, a marriage settlement or whatever. Things are going to happen that you have no idea over and you're putting yourself in the hole behind so you can be enslaved to something that you're not even sure if you like. And like the reality is, is like life is the best parts are, are these simple things of like humanity, life and relationships and just the simple things and we put so much priority on all these complicated and these all these degrees and titles and things like that but the reality is is that people want to have a family they want to retire they want to enjoy this 
They work their whole entire lives for the, they, so they can enjoy themselves, but you could actually enjoy yourself today. But that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, like, you do it to prove something that you, you got married and you can get a house and a mortgage. and So what? That That's just trapping yourself. Like, why do you care so much about <laughs> all this stuff when it's just going to trap you from who you actually really are? You're going to live to work. You're going to live to do your job for the next 40 years so you can retire and maybe live five or 10 years and you're old and you don't have your youth and you can't laugh anymore because you've been damaged or you've been so worked to death that you don't even know how to enjoy yourself anymore. Like you're going to build up so many bad habits and this hard discipline shell that no one can get past. I'm this person and no one can affect me. And I don't know how to love or communicate, but this is what people do. <sighs> Who wrote, who wrote the rules? I mean, it, 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 these are all businesses out there, educational systems, all the government systems, and they're telling you what to do because they want to take care of you and take the initiative for people that don't know how to take care of initiative themselves. But you're smart enough to take initiative. You're smart enough to take responsibility. You are good enough to be who you are and make it in life. You don't need someone else to tell you that. And it's there comes a point where, I mean, you need to have your eyes open a little bit and realize that you can be yourself and you can have a life being yourself. You can have a good life doing the things that you like if you just change. Like, and it's not going to be overnight. It took me over three years, maybe four, I don't know, five. And it could be longer than that if you want to count my military experience. It took me a long time, maybe 10, 15 years to actually figure out that I can be happy who I like the things that bring me joy are the things when I'm you're like a kid and you're creative and you're following your passion and your dreams and you're have good energy because you're free. You're not bogged down by like, oh I have to do this for someone for who? Like you gotta do it for the military, obviously you gotta fulfill your contract, blah blah blah. Or maybe you have a contract like I get it, like contract with your your mortgage and your college debt and your credit card debts and everything else, all the other debts you're owed. Like, can't you see that's a big burden? I can I can feel that right now. It, it sucks, and like I, I didn't even give yourself much a chance to breathe because I'm like I gotta go, I gotta do something, I gotta move. Like it, that's not that's not the way people are meant to live. Like to be enslaved because you're just always pressured to do something that you don't even enjoy. You just were told to do it. So how is that actually living when that's not freedom? That's like that's a form of slavery in a way, I guess, where you're doing things because because you got in trouble once, you know, or you. Believe someone when they didn't really have your best interests. Like, how would you feel after all these years that at the end of all this that you got lied to? So someone else could make a profit. So they could make a living. Like, someone else is leaving their dream off of whatever they promised you. When they can't really promise you, are they going to get you the job? Are they going to tell you what makes you happy? Are they going to tell you where to live? Are they going to tell you where to be on, on your weekends? Are they going to tell you how to spend your your days like only you can decide that like and you, those choices are up to you at the end, end of all of this like when you get your degree and you think you're you're finally ready it's time to take out like there comes a point when you're an adult like to actually okay this is who I am and I'm moving forward and I'm going to make the best of it and you can't always be in preparation mode like I gotta spend money to do this and I gotta spend money in this class and I gotta you have to at some point be, that's why the trade people are so successful. Like they just out of high school, they do it. They take action and they make good money, and they do very well for themselves. Whereas other people like to prepare. Like oh, I always go and I like to be prepared. I like to like. So you don't like to take action. That's what it is. Like you just want to look look perfect. Like the idea of being perfect like gives people so much stress and anxiety and puts them in the debt. And there's so many negative attributes to being perfect and being prepared and having the best clothes and the best degree and the best car, like it stresses you out. Like the people that actually make the difference are the people that have no stress and less responsibilities because they actually know how to be real, how to be themselves, how to live passionately, how to bring energy. Like they can laugh genuinely when you laugh superficially to get a transaction so you can get through the class or you can get a business thing. Like you don't actually truly know how to feel and like expressing your emotions. Like it's like slow down. And that's when things have changed for me is like, slow down. Why am I doing all this? And feel, talk your way through it. You're going to get through this. And you're going to get through it on your true nature, your true, true self. Like, you were built to be someone. You grew up and you were nurtured to be someone. 
you were in the birth order somewhere, so you had a role in the family to be the helper, the nurturer, the funny person, the leader, the firstborn. Uh, what was your role? Like you were molded into someone, <clears throat> whether you like it or not. And usually you're going to like tend to gravitate the, towards those anything. So you can fight it for a while, but you can realize that that's actually a strength. And that's how you actually helped your family get through certain circumstances. You're going to do the same thing for other people, just at a different level in a different community and a different family. That's like how you were trained to be. So like accept that like and grow on that, expand on that. How can you get better at it? And that's the same thing for me. Like I'm, I love people. I've, I'm always the person that I likes to keep the, get the family together, support mom and dad, um, be the person that puts some work and some force behind it, be the promoter of it, try to make it exciting, make it a fun. I like to throw parties and network and things like that. That's what I'm good at. And like, I don't have to feel bad. Like, Oh, someone's like parties are bad. Like, well, who's going to pay for it? That's the leaders, you know, or the financial person's job to do like, there's always a promoter, like his job isn't to worry about the finances or analyze or be an operation manager and worry about how this, everything is going. There needs to be people that are exciting, fun, and actually attract people to those events. And that's your role. Or if you're the comedian, you have a skit, you're the actor, and you have a, a role to f fulfill in the, in the party that may, brings you joy. If you're a leader and you like to organize things, that's your job. Make everything organized, everything neat, and make sure all the invites go out, make sure everyone responds. and do all the detail work while everyone else has a role of being funny and being the entertainment, whatever it is. So play your role, be who you are and appreciate it. And then, and look at how you grew up, where you are in the birth order, um, how you've let things affect you, what's holding you down, uh, what's stressing you out, truly stressing you out. And what's make like you'll have physical pain in your stomach and your chest and, and you'll, Put your eyes down you, you'll hang your head like physically you'll do these things and you won't even notice it you'll like feel shame when some come someone comes around someone that's been hurting you you'll act a certain way and it's not like it happens in family i act differently around other people because they might have the authority in some other area and i don't I have to let them take the lead but like you'll get physical pain like because you'll be ashamed of who you are and you'll be like oh i have pressure to do this and you push me to do that and you make me feel guilty for this and you call me this and you make me feel stupid or whatever because they come around like and that's bad like and i've been around a lot of people throughout the military and high school and big family um very tough marriage like it's just like you get this physical pain in your insides and you get like angry because uh, you've you know that there's going to be some kind of like slander some kind of thing their judgment they're going to do on you and it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel good to be criticized all the time and micromanage because they already may, they might feel the same way like oh i try not to inflict pain on other people i try to stay out of their way and let them do their thing and not be nosy and stay out of it you know like that's but there's certain people in your life that like stick their nose in your thing or make you feel bad or if you make you feel guilty and you don't feel loved by like you need to take a step back and like figure out a way where you can get some space so you can actually get some perspective and love yourself for who you are. So I need to get a breather here, so I'm going to stop right here. But thanks for listening.